right, let's get talking now. First interview segment on the program. The economic challenges in Nigeria have contributed to bite harder, has continued rather to bite harder, leading to the rising cost of living among low income earners in the country and a decline in the purchasing power of the average citizens. This development exacerbated by rising inflation, foreign exchange volatility, and the removal of fuel subsidy is taking a toll on the finances of the average workers who are lamenting that their monthly take or pay. Is far is a far cry from the current high cost of living. Against this backdrop, the need to diversify one's income and build multiple streams of income to become financially independent cannot be overemphasized for entrepreneurs and salary earners. To educate us more on how to build a healthy financial lifestyle and live in financial wellness, I'm now being joined live virtually by the chief executive officer of. O Ole Oladili.com, who is also the founder of the Money Wheat Club, Ole Oladili. Good morning, ma'am. It's a pleasure having you join me on the program. Good morning. Nice to be here. Thank you so much. All right, let's get talking now. Let's begin this conversation first with the basic understanding of financial wellness. Before now, we used to have what we call um, personal finance having more knowledge about personal finance, managing for your finance and all of that. But focus has shifted now to financial wellness. Can you make us understand what is financial wellness and how important is this to the average Nigerian out there, especially in current economic quagmire that we are being faced with in the country? So financial wellness is basically um, about an overall well-being, your overall well-being in terms of your finances, right? Mm -hmm. It is a situation where you're financially stable enough to meet your financial goals and also to handle financial challenges. Good. So there's a part where you meet your financial goals, but if something comes up, so imagine if you make a million dollars, right, and then you have a medical emergency and the bill is nine hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, mm -hmm. would you spend the money on the health care? Or would you say, I want to hold on to my money? Mm. Now, so financial wellness is a situation where you have positioned yourself so that you reach your financial goals, and then if a financial challenge comes up, you are positioned to meet it. In that context, having health insurance is something that would have solved that problem without money coming out of your hands, right? Yeah. Now, the fact is, we are in a very interesting economic situation right now, That's but true. I think it to you that there has never really been a time when the economy is totally clear, hmm. there is no form of uncertainty in the economy, something that always that thing that will happen, hmm. that would make us unclear about the future, that you always have to take a risk when you are moving into the future. So financial wellness is that thing that helps you meet your goals in spite of the environment. Mm. So it is very, very important at this time. Mm -hmm. The reason we have in this conversation is because you will agree with me that in Nigeria, whenever we are approaching the new year, you see people start setting up goals, financial goals and all of that. And myself, I saw it's not excluded of it. I think some weeks ago I was doing some personal um, evaluation of myself. How I've been able to make some money this year, I've been able to spend some money and then make some plans for next year as well. But there's one thing that is always a problem. When we make financial goals, we don't always meet up with our financial goals. As an expert in the field, what would you say is the rationale behind that? When we make goals, they, they put dreams on paper, hmm. right? Hmm. A goal is supposed to be smart, measurable, specific. Hmm. So I will be worth five million by December 2024. Hmm. That is a goal. Okay. But I want to be rich. Hmm. Is what people what people say as their goal mm. my goal is to be rich mm. but what does that reach mean mm. in specific terms yeah. right yeah. that's the first thing yeah. the second thing is that people write down goals but they don't work towards it mm. right yes if you set an audacious goal let's say all your life you've never accumulated five million mm. and maybe the total of accumulated is nine hundred thousand mm. but what is that when you write a five million goal by december 2024 the next question you should ask yourself is the people that make five million what are they doing wow you can find 20 of those things and say which one of these 20 things can i do or which two or three or four meaning if i'm doing four i'm going to divide it maybe 1.5 Per, per each activity, yeah. per activity, right? Yeah. So, the, so the two, one is that the goal is not really smart, yeah. and two people don't actually work towards their goal. Hmm. They continue what they usually do, hmm. and if you continue what you usually do, then you get the same results you've been getting. Definitely. 
All right, I like that there, and I think you've actually spoken to me directly, and I'll definitely work on that. Now, let's move on now. It is said that one of the many reasons people are poor, especially in third world nation, it's not necessarily due to lack of money, but because of lack of knowledge. And knowledge in this regard, we're talking about lack of education that has to do with money making and investments. Can you talk us through the types of investments and the different streams of income for our li listeners, um, our, our viewers who are watching now? Hello, ma'am, are you there? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, get, did you get my question? Yes, yes. So, um, so basically, the yes is true. The fact is that research has shown that financial education is a better predictor of future wealth mm. than you earn currently. Mm. What that means is that for most people, their goal is I need to increase my salary. Mm. But we can tell that the person can you hear me? Yes, I can. Loud and clear. Go ahead. But then we know that the person who wins, for example, a lottery. Data has shown that after five to seven years, all that money is gone, regardless of how much it is. Mm. So it's not just about increasing your salary, or increasing your pay. It's about the ability to manage it. Mm. Now, the way we want to talk about the different um, streams of income, there are things that will bring in interest. For example, if you invest in a bond, it means a commercial paper or a treasury bill, it will give you interest and it will be at a certain time, mm. fixed income. Mm. But there are some things that will give you capital gain. For example, you buy a stock at one naira, you sell it at two naira, that is capital gain. Mm. That same stock can also give you dividend. Okay. What is the dividend is that the company use your money to grow the business for the year mm. out of the profit they are sharing a portion with you that is dividend mm. and then there are some that will give you rent for example you invest in a property or you co-invest because these days you don't have to buy the whole property yourself yeah. right you co-invest in a property and you get rent yeah. now those are there are different streams of income but then guess what they all bring you to that same place where you have money that is not just you working every day mm. Mm. Hmm. Nice one there. Now, I, I, I need to ask you this question because I was having a conversation with someone about investing, making multiple streams of income and all of that. But it shows that savings these days, it's no longer encouraging in a sense that we have monies in our bank accounts, but then again, there are no interest into those savings. As it is right now, with current economic situation, would you advise that people keep saving or they turn their savings into investments? What's your thoughts on this? Things to save. Saving is basically if you earn 100k, yes. and only spend 70k, yes. put 30k aside. Yes. So you first of all need to have that culture of putting money aside. Okay. It is Great. fundamental. Hmm. Right? Because even if you want to invest, you can't invest air. Okay. You have to invest money. Yes. So saving is just that you have 100k, you earn 100k, hmm. only spend 70, put 30k aside. Hmm. That is the fundamental thing. However, hmm. the moment you start piling up on saving and you need that money in your bank account, inflation is coming for you. Yes. And what does that mean? If you could buy five bags of rice with the money you have saved hmm. probably be, with all the drama we have experienced this year you probably be buying only two hmm. that is the impact of inflation so you can't leave that money idle as you begin to pile it up so what i say is start with saving is it habit to have because that is the that is the, like the fundamental or the foundation of investing but once you start accumulating capital hmm. find where to plug it i like that once you start accumulating capital find where to plug it and that's the best way to make more money and make money works for you now i'm gonna ask you this now i know you have a lot on your plates to attend to today and we need to make this fast as a financial wellness specialist you will agree with me that one it's one thing to make money it's another thing to manage and multiply money and of course the most difficult aspect here in the value chain is the multiplication of money so how best can Nigerians multiply their streams of income and what investment opportunities are available for income diversification in our times like this? Really fantastic question. Um, I always tell people, especially in my community, that there are more investment opportunities than you have money for, hmm. if you know where to look, right? Hmm. So I can start from the things that you can start with at least, at least as 5k mm. right with mm. 5k you can start investing in stocks you can invest in mutual funds you can invest in saving bonds all right with five thousand naira. Mm. 